what if I told you that not only was the acolyte good, but it was so good that not only would you stop hating it, but you would keep watching it just to see what happens in the end. That's right, I am the man you may know as Z from our reviews, will kill you, and I'm back. I know I've been off for a couple weeks here. Sometimes you just got to refresh and recharge, but I am here to talk about the accolade. See, I've caught up, and I'm, I binged it. I know I reviewed like episode one and two, but I caught up with three and four. You know, the episodes that absolutely destroy Star Wars forever. I disagree. Now, I'm not saying it's a good show. I will start right from the from the start and we've got a lot of evidence to go through. We got a lot we got a lot of work through here. But I'm telling you, I and I'm not the only one who thinks this. I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to quit. And not only because I like reviewing things or I've reviewed every single piece of garbage that Star Wars has put out. And not because this is good, but because I am interested in what's going to happen at this point. This show it it is so bad. It might actually be good. The writing is absolutely abysmal. The costuming is atrocious. But there's something in this that's got me coming back for more. And I can't say it's just torture. It's interesting because, uh, you know, Charlie from Moist Critical, he said, he was like, I got to see what this is all about. And he hasn't watched anything since the Book of Boba Fett. And he's like... I wasn't going to keep reviewing this, but I have to find out what's going on with this train wreck because it's just too much. It's too much. You can't look away at this point. And it's funny because the <laughs> the acting isn't even that bad. I like Master Squid Game. The fact that his name is Soul is vaguely racist, I'm sure. But I'm, I think he's great. And uh, Amanda Stenberg or whatever her name is, the rich girl, she's fine. What her motivation, there's no motive, none of it makes any sense. So let's just say there'll be spoilers for the episode. Let's catch up to where we are. I'm going to briefly go over the plot. We're going to look at a couple articles, and I'm going to convince you to keep watching it because it's not as bad as you think. I have watched so many channels be like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. And don't get me wrong, it's absolutely terrible. But is it really worse than the Book of Boba Fett or what happened to Obi-Wan? I shall remind you of this. Okay, uh, what should, I, I will remind you of this first. Let me, let, let's just look at the Book of Boba Fett. Remember this? The stupid Vespa, the slowest chase scene you've ever seen in your entire life from the Book of Boba Fett. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's not good at all. In fact, it's the worst chase scene I've ever seen. It's got every hallmark of the cheesiest chase scene I've ever seen. Do you remember the blue and the hot red and the yellow Vespas that they got into a slow speed chase with? Where they actually had the whole joke about like we're going to break a glass a window pane. Like it, it was that bad. I think the the end guy got got beaten by like a bag of tomatoes or something. Do you remember this in Obi Wan, where Obi Wan Kenobi literally smuggled Princess Leia out of an Imperial base underneath of his trench coat as if he were riding on her shoulders? Do you remember her peeking out to see where the stormtroopers were from the from the best? bestest base most difficult base to break into ever i just want to remind you people of what's worse because the power of one the power of two the power of many compels you so let's just let's just talk about it okay so there's a set of twins and one's a good twin one's a bad twin and they're not the doubleman twins and the bad twin starts killing Jedi Masters because she's just so absolutely badassery. She, uh, you know, 
throws a knife. Lightsabers don't kill anybody, but little tiny throwing knives do. Okay, fair enough. And then she convinces a second Jedi Master to off himself with uh, by drinking a vial of, of poison. Awesome. That leaves two Jedi Masters left, one of which happens to be her twin sister sister's master as she was a padawan and then there's uh a a really cool super awesome wookie jedi which you will never see do anything at all so essentially it was a, it was a murder mystery which there was no mystery at all solved in the first episode completely not even a problem who needs mystery anyway so, and the twins look exactly the same after not seeing each other for 16 years. Pfft, who cares about continuity? One of them has slightly longer hair, I did notice. So, they don't look exactly the same, right? So, Bad Twin has been training training with some sort of Sith dude. And um, she f- thinks her sister's dead. So, she's going to avenge her, all of her, you know, she's going to avenge her mom's. She has moms, by the way. And uh, the flashback in episode three and episode and, and then continuing to episode four, you get to see that these two twin girls were born of the Force because of the dark arts of these witches. Apparently, the Jedi don't like it when you take children and train them to be Force users because potentially they could become evil. Well, these witches just magically create children who are Force users. Now, the Jedi aren't like, we're going to shut your temple down. We're going to kill all of you. They're just like, hey, don't mess with the kids. We're going to test them, see if we, you know, we're child protective services. And we don't think you're handling the kids real good here. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we do. They're, they're, they're the space cops. And, you know, we've heard a complaint about the children's here. So they come, they investigate the children, and they're like, hey, kids, what do you want to do? And the kids are like, one of them's like, I want to be a space witch. And the other one's like, I want to be a Jedi. And they're like, how about we test you both and let's see what happens. And then before we get the results of who is going to be a Jedi and and who's going to be whatever, the two twins start fighting over the fact that they don't want to abandon their moms and the psychopath decides to burn down their entire compound while uh, Jedi Squid Game come, uh, Jedi Master Squid Game comes out and saves one of the twins. And the other twin, he watches fall to her death. But apparently she's not dead, you know, because we already solved that mystery back in the first episode. So then we end up where, you know, uh, evil, you know, psychopath decides like, hey, you know what? I'm kind of tired of killing Jedi. And I know my sister's alive. Even though I knew that in the last episode, I flew to another planet to find the Wookiee and kill the Wookiee. But you know what? I don't actually feel like killing the Wookiee. I'm going to turn myself in. And that's when things get Teddy Bonkers and you get Smilo Ren, which could be the greatest character of all time. Spoiler alert, and this is the thing that Charlie was, was saying... He needs to see whether or not Smilo Ren is the little snaky guy, which he clearly is. There, there's no way it could be anybody else. There's only like 10 characters. There's not even 10 characters in this show. There's like this guy who's helping um, May, the evil psychotic twin, kill the Jedi. And he's like, hey, our master keeps telling us to do stuff. And she's like... Yeah, but I don't really feel like doing it that way. And then she's like, the guy was like, well, the master really said you should do this. There are so many plot holes in this. It's, it's, ban- it's bananas. You have a Jedi Wookiee, which doesn't get to fight at all. In fact, when May shows up to kill the Jedi Wookiee, which she was supposed to kill herself, her master already got in and killed the Jedi Wookiee. And then this is one of the greatest scenes I've ever seen of all time. She's essentially uh, barricaded herself into where the Jedi Wookiee was hiding, right? So there's a, a party of Jedi, including her sister and Master, um, you know, Master Squid Game, and the dude who's a dork. I forget his name. And then the girl who likes Osha, who's the, who's the good twin. There's like some sort of weird romance thing there going on. Who knows? Anyway, she's kind of, May's kind of barricaded herself in with the dead Wookiee, which never got to do anything whatsoever. 
and this Sith Master like floats down behind Osha like Mary Poppins. He's got this big grin on his face, his helmet. It's so great. I just I love it. It's so great. I it can't it can't get any better. All of the Jedi charge. The, he literally he, she, whatever, lights up their their lightsaber and is like throws Osha away for whatever reason and decides to fight the Jedi and then just throws all the Jedi away. It's so great. Did I tell you there's a little beaver guy that gets gets ejaculated in the face. Did I mention that part? How great that part is? You guys don't understand how great this is. You have to watch it. It is so good. Um, Let's just look at this real, real quick. We're going to talk a little bit about, in the three weeks of The Acolyte, it has more audience reviews than three seasons of The Mandalorian. Do you think it's getting review bombed? I don't know. And again, I don't care. This is not... Star Wars is a joke at this point, right? I watched Star Wars Theory was complaining about... There's some Jedi Master who's on the council, and his name's like Cat Mundy or something. He's a dude with a big, tall head. W one of the points I want to make is, Star Wars has the softest lore of any of the sci-fi things. Like, do I really care about some Jedi Master, whether or not he was born during this time or not born during this time? Yoda is, Yoda is like, I live 800 years. I don't know how long Cat Moon Dune Die Do guy lives. I could care less. We're not talking like, you know, George R. R. Martin and his books or, you know, Star Trek or one of the hard sci fi things. This is soft sci fi. They ruined the lore in the first movie when Han Solo says, I did the Kessel run in five parsecs or whatever he says. Guess what? Parsecs is a distance, not a measure of time. It's okay. You're allowed to have continuity errors in Star Wars. It's not that big of a deal. As long as you don't completely break things, like Obi-Wan Kenobi did, where Princess Leia has never met Obi-Wan Kenobi before, yet apparently she had a whole adventure with him that no one ever knew about, and she never speaks about ever again. One of those things. Like That's something that like a normal person would see and be like, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's this is in Star Trek where it's like oh you know everybody gets crazy over something that's breaking lore right so anyway is a review bombed uh, I mean it's it's not as so far it's don't get me wrong it is boring boring and it's not very good and it doesn't look like they spent 180 million dollars clearly money laundering going on clearly uh, but the accolade has 25 thousand reviews. Mandalorian, 17,500. Obi-Wan Kenobi, 10,000. Andor only had 5,000. Ahsoka, 5,000. The book of Boba Fett had 2,500 reviews. I don't know why people are so pissed about this, other than, you know, Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant is the head person who's in charge of this, but whatever. Elon Musk even weighed in. Elon, good old Elon. He, uh, he, he slams... Killing stars with woke propaganda, deadlier than the death, more deadly than the Death Star. I mean, this is beyond woke. Like it's not even woke. It's just incoherent. the The writing is so bad on this. The master assassin at one point has to defeat a Jedi master, right? And she has to break into this Jedi temple that has no guards, where. In the scene immediately after she breaks in, she disappears through a, like a like a like a what do you call that? Like a not, not not like a nightlight, like a like a a hole in the roof. She just disappears through a hole in the roof, which she could have come down through in the first place, and and she actually disappears twice through the hole in the roof that no one actually looks at and pays attention to. Okay, so um, this has gotten so crazy, all of this stuff that. The lead actress, uh, and I'm not going to diss her for this. It's the cringiest thing I've ever seen. This is what is so amazing about all of this. You literally got a diss track from the lead actress in the show. She goes, happy Juneteenth. And to those who are flooding me with intolerable racism, since it took me 72 hours on my laptop to make this song and video, you got 72 hours to respond. And I expect... Choreo. I don't know what that means, but
But I do know that the very next comment is, I wish I was half as oppressed as you. Being worth $1.5 million would be sick. And the song is absolutely so cringy and ama it's amazing. This is the this is the gift that keeps on giving. Granted, she keeps copyright striking anybody who plays her song, which I will not play. But go listen to it yourself. I mean, it is absolutely cringeworthy and unbelievably amazing. It's it's amazing. This is so much fun. I am having so much fun. I cannot even explain it to you. Like, I need to know. Whether or not her, like, creepy friend who made her the poison vial, I don't know what his name is because I don't know who any of the characters' names are except for Master um, Squid Game. His name is Seoul because it's mildly racist that they called a Korean Seoul after the only city that they could name in Korea, or at least South Korea. You know, Pyongyang being North Korean, but they could they couldn't name them that, right? Oh my god! So anyway, I just think that this is amazing. It's beautiful. It's giving us so much, and I just I could talk about it forever. And we we need to experience this as a culture and enjoy it because it doesn't come around this much. And guess what? The things you can't keep throwing money away unless you straight up admit to money laundering. Then. Then that's okay. I guess we can just look the other way. But this is this is unbelievable. And um, like they got they got Charlie is hooked. He's gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. You should watch it. It's not even as it's it's just it's not terrible. It's just not good at all on any level at all. There's like one good fight scene, maybe, and that's it. They have a Wookiee who's a Jedi who never even picks up a lightsaber. Why would you even? Hero Wookie. They don't have the tech. They have $180 million and they don't have the technical time or money to bring Yoda into this. It's a, it's amazing. Check it out. Let me know what you think. I think I've convinced you that this is good. Many people just say it's trash. You haven't watched it. You haven't watched the video, the diss track against the Star Wars fans. You have to watch it. And I've done many videos. Look, I have an ad ad in the background. I paid like $8 for a bottle of Coke in Star Wars Land. I did a lightsaber duel with my co-host. I like I like Star Wars. This is this isn't Star Wars, but it's ridiculously amazing. Anyway, thank you for listening. I do appreciate it. I know I may have rambled on, but I had a lot of points I, I wanted to catch up. Thank you for joining me. I do love all you guys out there. Catch our full-length audio podcast. It is on iTunes to, uh, iTunes, and YouTube, which is great, and Rumble, which is amazing, and all of those things. Come join the live stream, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Support the channel. It helps us out greatly. For $1, you can help pay for Starving Noob Noob, my co-host, who is not here because he's starving and he needs the money. So anyway, thank you for listening. I do appreciate you guys. I will be back with many more rants. Much more fun. Let's keep it going. I You gotta love the Acolyte. Let's move on because I gotta get to the next one. <laughs>